When we first started, we were scared. You know, other people may think we're crazy for trying. Look at all that we're putting at stake. Someone's got to do it. We've been told it's impossible. We've been told by many people it is likely to fail, but we have to go. The challenge is to get an eight-foot robot to cross the Atlantic. It's a groundbreaking mission that's giving us data that we haven't had before. This data is critical to understand how the ocean is impacting climate change. So we have to understand what's going on in the ocean because it regulates the climate. And to understand the ocean, we have to sample it. And the only way we're going to do that is with robots. There is a big urgency here. We're at a race against time because the oceans are changing in our lifetime. And major changes in the ocean have always resulted in major changes of life on us. The odds are very slim that we're actually going to get this vehicle across. This is not something that's easily done. There is very little that is more risky that you can do with a robot than this. This is the cool room. This is our Houston. This is our mission control right behind us. It's the most advanced ocean and observatory on the planet. This is where all the data comes in, just like they launch at Cape Kennedy, but they command in Houston. This glider has a long and scary journey ahead of her. She has fishing nets that could grab her and end the mission instantaneously. We've only been out five days and we're already in danger. We're heading for a fleet of scallopers, so we have to get out of there quick. There's hurricanes that can just toss her from the tops of 50-foot waves down into the troughs. This is a weather map for the ocean. We're flying from one storm to another storm. We get storm to storm to storm to the Azores. There's the sea monsters. There's all kinds of biology out there. The squid, the sharks that can latch on, attack anything at any given time. We are a month in and this is very scary for us to see because something's out there. August 27th for our U-27. Four months in, we have a glider in trouble. Something's causing her to spin, and we're at the mercy of the currents. Several clocks that we're racing against. One is that we have a hurricane heading our way. So here's the hurricane, and here's the Azores to the south, where the glider is. Go out there, be safe. Where are you? Did you hear what happened to us last night? We got stuck at 73 meters. That's not good. No, something stopped us. Scared the death out of us. There she is! I see her! I see her! I see her! And she's still yellow! I've got her. I'm not letting my eyes off of her. Ooh. They're not going to be able to spend too much time in the water with the swells that we're having. And we're still limited on air. So we've got to make sure that we work as fast as we can so that they're not in too long. Well, but right now, the glider's not flying. Chip! They just want to do more test missions! shark has got my pulse going. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. We've had some sharks in the area. I'm watching the divers. I want to make sure they get back on board. Well, we've crossed all the way from New Jersey to the European side of the ocean. Scarlet has flown longer than any other glider in the world for six and a half months. The most critical parts of any flight are the takeoff and landing, and the landing's the hardest part. That's what we have coming up. Winter in Spain is a very bad time to be at sea on the North Atlantic. Sometime over the next week, we should be in Spanish waters. If we make it, we're the first ones to fly or glider across the Atlantic. And that's big.